Welcome to Solid Game Hunting. We were out elk scouting last weekend and we got pretty excited. We saw a few big bulls and they're big already. So we thought we'd share a few tips with you on the upcoming elk season. Hopefully you have a tag or know a friend that does and you can help him out. And we thought, <clears throat> thought first we'd go over calls, not so much what call you use, what brand or anything like that, whether it be an open read, a diaphragm that I use a lot of, um, the bugles, of course, different manufacturers, they fit people differently. You sound different than the next person sitting next to you. The, I think the key is play with a bunch of different calls, and that's what I do every year. Play with all my bugles, every call that I have, and I get that one that I really like that year, that's perfect, that I can pull out of the box when that bull is at 100 yards, all of a sudden he bugles, screams in my face, and you get excited, pull a call out that you don't know which one you have. If you have four diaphragms or two or three of these, you don't know which one you pulled out and all of a sudden you sound like a duck or something worse. You squeal too loudly or you just don't make an elk sound. You want to be able to make that elk sound first time, every time, perfectly. The second thing I'd like to go over is we talked about how we were going to approach each session with a bull if you will, is how we are going to approach that bull and get him called into us so we can get a good clean shot. We usually start calling, you know, a quarter mile or more, depending on how well you can hear that morning or evening. And you want, you don't want to be all of a sudden 75 yards from that bull and rip a big old bugle or a whole bunch of cow calls and over call. You want to start your calling process further away and let him know that you're coming into his range. And that also gives you an opportunity to kind of feel the bull out, whether he likes cow calls that day, or a big loud bugle, or a smaller bull bugle, or that type of thing. Um, you can kind of learn what that bull might react to when you get in close to that 75 yard range where you need to be really set up and ready to call that bull the rest of the way in and get your shot gives you an opportunity to also maybe hear if there's any cows that are around him they might call back to you if you cow call and things like that so you don't spook the whole herd off just trying to get within range to where you think you can pull that bull out of the herd if he's a lone bull he's probably going to respond more quickly to your calls and be more ready to come in so be really cautious that way that you don't walk in on, and i've done this walking in on a bull and he's standing there waiting for you to come in he thinks you're an elk and you walk right in there and he sees you and he's gone. Things like that can ruin your trip really quickly. The last thing I want to talk about today is we try to pick and choose which bulls we call in and by that I mean if we're not going to shoot a small bull we don't call him in just to educate him. We want to prioritize the couple big bulls that we're on that we're trying to shoot. We also don't go into another man's unit and call in all the bulls just to get a look at him. They get hard enough pressure throughout the hunts without going before the hunt also and calling in all those elk, having a bunch of calls going out there and hunters pulling up in their trucks and everything else. Just educating and the, the elk learn very quickly. There's enough hunting videos you can learn how to call elk and not spook all the elk in your area before you finally get a shot at one. We'll have vlogs on that later, how to get that bull in the last 20 or 30 yards that you need to, how to get your shot off, get a good ethical shot, and be done. We're really excited about this year. Good luck hunting, solid game hunting.